Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral on this Thursday, January the 26th. I'm Rose Duncan Cannon for worship and we are so pleased that you decided to join us this morning for the service of prayer and reflection. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Christ, we commend ourselves to your care and your direction this day. May we speak with your tongue, work with your hands, walk with your feet, see with your eyes, think with your thoughts, and love with your heart. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Hear these words from a portion of Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it the world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not pledged themselves to falsehood nor sworn by what is a fraud. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. The reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter beginning at the 21st verse. Jesus said to them, Is a lamp brought into be put under a bushel basket or under the bed? and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. If you have ears to hear, then hear. And then he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and it will be all added to you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Now, reading Jesus continues his preaching by using metaphors. He asks his disciples, is a lamp brought to be placed under a bushel basket or put under a bed? Shouldn't a lamp be placed on a lampstand so that the light will fill the room? Jesus then says, there is nothing hidden that will not be made visible, and there is nothing secret that will not come to light. Jesus tells his listeners, anyone who has ears ought to hear. And then he says, take care of what you hear. But Jesus also warns his disciples that the measure you give will be the measure you get, and it will be added to you. And still more will be given to you. Jesus uses the image of a lamp and light to describe who the disciples are to be in the world. They are to be a light for the world. And Jesus also calls each one of us to be our own light, to shine in the world. Our world is in need of light and hope, and each of us has the ability to share both in our own lives, wherever we may find ourselves. And if we pay attention, we will see where the need exists most in our communities. Jesus told us that we are the light of this world. That's what we are. And we absolutely must let the light of God be revealed in truth and shine before others in everything that we do. That's our call. Today in the life of the church, we remember Timothy and Titus who also knew that very same call. As companions of Paul, Timothy and Titus are commemorated together close to the feast of Paul's conversion. Timothy was a native of Lystra in Asia Minor, the son of a Greek father and a Jewish mother who was a believer. We learn from the Acts of the Apostles that he was well spoken of by the brethren in Lystra and Iconium. In addition to being a devout companion and devoted companion of Paul. Timothy was entrusted with missions to the Thessalonians to encourage them under persecution and to the Corinthians to strengthen the converts in the faith. 
Timothy became Paul's representative at Ephesus, and according to Eusebius, the first bishop of that city. Now Titus was, like Timothy, a companion of Paul, who calls him my true child in the common faith. Titus, a Greek, accompanied Paul and Barnabas from Antioch to Jerusalem at the time of the Apostolic Council. During Paul's third missionary journey, Titus was sent on urgent missions to Corinth. Paul writes, quote, and besides our own comfort, we rejoice still more at the joy of Titus because his mind has been set at rest by you all. And his heart goes out all the more to you as he remembers the obedience of you all and the fear and trembling with which you received him." Unquote. Paul several times mentions their youth while entrusting them with great responsibilities in administration and in the proclaiming of the gospel. A reminder to us that not age, but faithfulness, care, and the love of Christ are the important qualities for Christian witness to the world. Almighty God, you called Timothy and Titus to be evangelists and teachers and made them strong to endure hardship. Strengthen us to stand fast in adversity and to live godly and righteous lives in this present time, that with sure confidence we may look for our blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as Jesus taught his disciples, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and to proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. <laughs>